do know. If you haven't applied for that thing, and May 22nd starts coming around, and you remember May 22nd, and you go, I did this, I'm not doing that. Yo, people try to forget pain. I wish you did. Here's what people do with pain. They do what's called rumination. It's a cognitive behavioral therapy term, rumination. Rumination says you take something and we replay it over and over and we condition ourselves to uh, not take action because of the thing we ruminate over, right? So if she chose to ruminate over whatever happened, which again, you can't even imagine the atrocity that you witnessed, right? So if she ruminates over it, it paralyzes her from moving forward. If she feels the pain, but then goes, if I did that, what can I do? And she remembers it every May 22nd. I promise you, you will go so much further. It's not to think about it, to say, oh, Rel, you're forcing me to be in this painful state. No, I want you to remember that so you never forget where you came from. And you, yo, one of the reasons why I feel way more confident as an adult than I did as a kid is because I knew that like I spotted the problems. Yeah, yeah. Right, like I know I did that. No one can take that from me. I spent 17 years in the projects, right? Now mind you, it wasn't like every day, it was like, you know, Yemen, right? It's not, I don't, my, I, my projects was like, you know, royalty for the people in Yemen, I'm sure. But for me, it was my difficulty, right? So I had a broken arm, she had a gunshot wound. It's still my pain, it's still her pain, I want you to get it. Whatever you did, I, I, I am lucky the fact that in my profession, I speak, so therefore I get to talk about my story a lot, so I have to bring up the fact that I'm from the project often, and I'm glad I do, because I think, like yo, my house now, I love my house, I just bought a new house, I, it's the house I do it okay, thank you. I'm telling you, the car I'm driving is the car I dream of. The wife I'm married to is the woman I dream of. I, got, I wanted two sons, two years apart. I got two sons, two years apart. Right? Good. Thank you. Thank you. Right? And I don't say that to be like, wow, look how great I am. I say that because I survived the projects. Yeah. Like, do you get, if you grow up in the projects and you get a house that just has like three blades of grass, you like, that's what you <laughs> I got grass! <laughs> Yo, that's way better than being in the project. Yo, I live in one of those neighborhoods. I, I can't, I can't tell you how much I love this part of my neighborhood. When you, when you are walking in the street and someone drives by, you don't know them, but you do a courtesy wave. Have you ever been to a neighborhood? Yes. People don't do that in the projects. I wish they did. Like it would be such a nicer place if people were just nice to each other. But we're like so boxed in and so constrained. Like, Trying to just survive and treat each other poorly. But yo, when I'm in nice neighborhoods, I don't know people. They're jogging. Hey, neighbor! I'm like, hi! Yeah. Is this <laughs> I needed a drill. I'll put together this. Oh my God, I bought this thing from Wayfair. Y'all ever heard of Wayfair? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. It's just like they send you cool stuff, but it's not put together. It's like IKEA, right? So I'm with my wife. We almost get into a divorce trying to put this thing together because we hate each other. Like, how do we put it, right? And I'm like, I realize my drill is not powerful enough. I know nothing about home ownership, right? Apparently, you need a drill that's more powerful. So I go over to my neighbor and I'm like, hey neighbor, I know it's real, I just moved in. Go, oh, hey, how you doing? Come on in. I was like, oh, thanks a lot, man. I'm trying to put the thing together. I don't have a good drill. It's like, oh, I got a great drill. That's what neighbors are for. It gives me this power drill. And I was like, how sweet is this? Mm. And I could have easily just been like, well, he's supposed to do that. But I'm like, how sweet is it? Like, he just like, it's like, come on in, man. That's what neighbors are for. Here's the drill, man. Just let me know if you need any help, whatever. And I'm like, yo, I came for the projects. Now, for someone from that neighborhood, that might be no big deal. That might be no big deal. Mm. You, get, you get that? But for me, that's a lot of you get one. Some of you ladies walk around on your phone, and if you're not talking to anybody, you just don't want people to think you're alone, right? Survival. There's some of you fellas that walk around with your hand in a fist, just in case you gotta throw it, <laughs> <laughs> just for survival. You know what I'm saying? Right? Like you get like when you're here, you don't have to do any of that. But we don't soak in how beautiful that is. We don't soak in how beautiful that is. I mean, you, did you tell your story? Okay, everyone knows this story. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I mean, look, like so my point is like you should have utmost confidence wherever you go. And the only reason why you're not gonna go after the things 
because you don't have, you're not accessing what we're talking about here. I'm talking about the confidence to be around people. Because if you're confident around people because you know you have expertise, because you're not adhering to any socially acceptable excuse, right? you know they've done horrible things that are super embarrassing and you got that over them, and you remember where you've been and what you've overcome, tell me someone you can't talk to. Tell, tell me, if you, have, if you have that in your mind, tell me what you can't do. But what most of us have in our mind is, well, I hope I don't say something stupid. Yeah. Yeah. I wear hijab, I hope they don't judge me. I have an accent, I hope they understand me. That's what we focus on, you get that? Mm -hmm. And when you focus on that, how could you become? How could you? When I walk into a room, I'm like, I survived the project, what y'all gonna do to me here? If I came up here and I suck, what y'all gonna do to me? What you gonna do to me? You'd be like, you suck! You're not gonna punch me in the face. <laughs> God willingly, it never happens. I've never been punched in the face during this It doesn't mean it's off the table. Because <laughs> I know, I feel like sometimes I might say something and be like, you're taking my pain away! And it was like, oh God, right? Like, that really wanted to fight. God, God willingly, it doesn't happen, right? What I'm saying is like, but you get that? Like, trust me, look, whatever, I keep going back to the son of the story, that's a little bit. Don't mind me calling you out here. But just get this. No matter what, ain't nobody gonna do to you what happened to you. Nobody. So what do you have? What do you have to go? What? What? Just please tell me one thing. Oh, I, I wanted to be a part of the honors fellows, but they didn't send me into the program. No one's gonna shoot you with a machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> like, who cares? Bless you. Who cares? I really want this professor to write me a recommendation, but I'm scared to ask. They're not going to hit you with a machete. You see what I'm saying? Like, you have to get present. And again, I keep going back to her. But, like, look, you've all had whatever your thing is. Who's ever been punched in the face before? Okay. Whenever you start feeling like you can't do something, just know they're not going to punch you in the face. <laughs> So whatever happens, it's not going to be as bad as something that already happened that I survived. Exactly. So why can't I survive this? But that's where you like that's that's where you have to be when you walk into circumstances, right? That's the place of power you walk into. And here's the other thing that goes really well. This helps. I mean, look, it's just not everybody's lucky enough for this. But if you have it, raise your hand if you have someone you love in your life. This is very important. All the way up. Let me see your arm. Help me shot. Raise someone you have that you love in your life. Okay. No matter what happens in the world, you got nothing to be good. Don't complain about anything. What? Don't complain about anything to you. You have that person. But look, I could shut with y'all. I really could. Jason would be like, Aurel, I know we've been doing this for like 12, 13 years. I'll never bring you back. I'm be like, damn, that hurts. But when I go back, my wife's going to give me a kiss. And she's hot, so I like you. <laughs> <laughs> So no matter how bad I get, she's, she's hot. She's a great woman, you know what I'm saying? Like, no matter how bad things get, no matter how bad things get, work who you're going to see tomorrow, that's my best friend. I can call him whenever I'm going He took off from work just to come see me speak. He's seen me speak a thousand times. Right? That's my best friend. That's my, so no matter how bad it gets, I can call him. And, you know, I think Bert said this. I think you said this. Or you, you posted this, I thought this was really good. It was like the right people can never say the wrong things. What was it? I don't know if I posted that. No, no, no. You posted. You said a friend of yours said that to you. Maybe. You had this list. I, I'll, I'll find it. I remember I saw it on your page. But it was something to the effect that the right people can never say the wrong things. You know what I mean? Like the right people in your life. The right people can never say. Like the right people can be like, you are acting like a little punk. And you're like, you're right. So, confidence. If you got one person that you love, what you worry about? Because if you let them down, if they really love you back, they'll survive. You get it? If you like, I let this person down, and, like, they're never gonna like, they're never gonna like, I can't believe how that, if they're making you feel like that, they're really not the right person. After that, you gotta decide what you're gonna do. I can't tell you, stay, leave, I can't tell you. But if you're like, 
Like, because if I let someone down that I love, they should know I'm not doing it because I'm trying to hurt them. But if they try to make me think and convince me I'm trying to hurt them, I know they're not the right person because the right person can never do something like that. Mm. Right? So if you got that person, whoever's mean to you, that's okay. You got your son, you got your daughter, you got your wife, you got your husband, you got your mom, you got your brother. Right? You may have someone who's dead. Just talk to them in heaven. They're not born. They're just physically not here. Not, they're not listening if you talk to them. That's what I think. So like, yo, what are you not confident? Like, what can't you do? But I say this to you, and you go, or, and then I say, can I have a volunteer? And you be like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know if you get this? Step up. Like, stop saying, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna like put pressure on you today. But like after this, it's gonna be a self-defense, you know, class, right? If someone says I need a volunteer, you'd be like, he might clip me, okay. Just see what happens. You're not gonna die. A trained professional, not the kid. Right? I just assume that's a yes. <laughs> yo, when you get yo, when you understand that you got someone who loves you, okay, over this. And you understand the person you're talking to, you know, watch porn till four in the morning, did all sorts of things to themselves, mm -hmm. looked in the mirror and said, I'm a disgusting, and then went back to doing it, and you know this about them. What are, you, what are you worried about? You know, you got dirt on them. They don't ever have to tell you. It may not even be true. But just because you believe it's true, it's true. Some of you in the room, I give that as an example, and you're like, a real life, never done that. That could be true, but I still think you did. So I'm still confident around you. Because I'm like, I know you did that. I can tell you did that, right? Like, you'd be like, I never did that. Well, it doesn't matter. That's what I think. If there's a snake, underneath your chair, poisonous snake, would you jump? Yes. If there was a stick under your chair, but you thought it was a snake, would you still jump? Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's a stick or a snake. So I go, I just, it helps me have confidence whenever I walk into the room. I know you've done filthy things. He's like, yeah. <laughs> he may never have done it. He may never have done it. He may, look, you may never have done the things I think you've done. But because I think it, I know I'm confident. Because I'm like, you're like me, you probably did it. You said, walk around with this level of confidence. So if you have confidence around people, no's don't hurt you as much. They still hurt. If anyone tells you, I swear, I hate when people say, oh, don't worry about what other people think. Just care about yourself. Everyone cares about what other people think. You, 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 you. All of you do. Any of you who go, not me around, I, I do me. I don't care what other people think. It's not true. I can prove it in a heartbeat. I can prove it in a heartbeat. I say, work. Welcome to that stranger over there. Start a conversation with him. See how many people do. Thank you. Doesn't matter who the stranger is. I don't matter who it is. I say, okay, you don't care what other people think about you? Take your shirt off right now in front of everybody. What? Why? Because you care what they think about you. You get what I'm saying? There is no one that doesn't have that. There's no one. Take your shirt off right now. If you anyone here who's like, I don't put a rub, I don't care what other people think of me, stand up right now, take your shirt off. Go ahead. I'll wait. You guys are five dollars. That's a whole other thing. Y'all too much, man. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying? Like. We care what people think, because some of us may go, oh no, well, it's not that I care what other people think, it's that I have morals. Oh, so you don't want other people to see you not having morals. You get it? It's all just time. So it's not like I'm saying give it up. It's not like I'm trying to tell you, you know, don't care what other people think. You will always care what other people think. So if that's the case, you might as well put yourself in a position to be the most confident by doing the things we talked about. So if you have confidence where you want to be, I mean, what can't you do? What can't you do? What's your name? Black. What is it? Blanca. Blanca? That's it, right? Blanca. Okay. Where are you from, Blanca? Mexico. When did you, when did you come from Mexico, Keith? I don't know. 12 years ago. Okay. I, I've been to Mexico a few times. I don't know where you're from. You, what kind of place did you grow up in Mexico? Many places. Moved around a lot. 
like you had like a rich family who was like, I don't want to live here anymore. I want to live in a bigger house. It's like, what was it? What was kind of the reason? How come you didn't stay in Mexico if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, why, why are you not there now? Just like, you know. So there's opportunity here. And you chose to stay here because you believe there's opportunity here, or do you plan on moving back there? Yeah. Right. So, she's alive, right? so now, if you ever have to deal with transition or change, you literally move all around a country and then move to another country, okay? And create a new life here. So don't ever tell me you can't handle change. You get me? You get me? I could do this with every single one of you if I wanted to. Every single one of you. So if you ever block me, or in a position where you're like, oh my gosh, things have changed, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm like, you moved around a whole other country and then moved to another country and figured it out. Don't tell me you can't change classes or change majors. See what I'm saying? Don't tell me you, don't tell me you can't. But we have a proficiency to forget. If you allow yourself to feel pain but not ruminate, you get the difference when I talk about rumination? Rumination is when you play it over and over so it paralyzes you. If you can get to a point where you're like, I'm not going to ruminate, I'm going to feel the pain, but acknowledge what I've done. Acknowledge what I've done. And that's the other thing about y'all. I hate this about every single one of you. Because I, I do this too. That's why I know you do it too. <laughs> if I said, tell me five things you love about your best friend, your, the person you love, you'd be like this. Boop, 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 boop. Tell me five things you love about yourself. Uh -huh. I don't know. I'm lying? I'm lying? No. Why is that? Why do we do that? Because we don't acknowledge what we do. We don't acknowledge what we do. Oh my God. Tell me. All right, hold on. Tell me if this doesn't sound like <clears throat> someone in the room. Hold on. I'm going to become you right now. You know, I always know the people would just see how beautiful they are. I just have so many people I believe in, so many people close to me that I feel like they can do anything. I just don't understand why they don't see themselves the way I see them. Because you don't see yourself the way you're supposed to see yourself. Uh, did that sound familiar to anybody? Yes. Oh, you want me to really punch you in the stomach? Figure it. Okay. Metaphoric. You want me to punch you in the stomach? Yeah. If I can be honest with myself, <clears throat> the reason why I encourage other people to dream is because I've already given up on myself. Now I've done some things, don't get me wrong, but that big dream I had, it's not for me. But for you, you can do it. I believe in you. Don't look at me. You do not believe in yourself. I want you to dream big. Because I've given up on myself, and I know what it feels like. And I don't want you to do the same. Tell me that don't sound like I know. Like, this is a deep motivational talk around. <laughs> Yo, because like you got another chance. Look, I'm never gonna be in the NBA. Literally. Never. Like never. It doesn't matter how hard I like I can tell you I have to practice as hard as I want. It will never happen for me. Right? So what? So what? Make another dream. Can't give up on yourself and expect other people to believe in themselves. People come in here for quick, people don't believe you. That's how you ever have someone say something to you and for some reason it just doesn't hit. Someone else says the exact same thing and you just believe it. It's authenticity. You gotta be authentic. Who's a parent? Any parents? Punch you in the stomach then. You're all right. You're all right. Never ever expect anything from your kids you don't expect from yourself. Let me make this real. Don't be telling your kids, 
You don't eat no desserts after dinner and then after they go to sleep, you eat the exact thing you're talking about. <laughs> It don't matter that they don't see you. They're inauthentic. If you say no dessert after dinner and then as soon as they go to sleep, you eat the exact thing you told them not to eat, who are you? Things on the corner. I know. <laughs> no, you don't. 
You know what I'm saying? But just notice how immediately there was just a visceral like. Right. But no, I read it was a really good book. Okay. There was pictures of people like wearing like fur around their hood. It's like I get it. <laughs> this is my vision of Harlem. <laughs> okay, someone had their hand up. I saw a hand up. I was thinking about it. Okay. <laughs> I was kind of thinking because you know in relation to that, I was thinking like you know I never like she said she never went to the military. I never got into the police academy. So it's like a little. It's my family is military um, lawyers. They do a lot with you know justice. But before I started doing a lot of the things, I was raised by men who did. So and you get what it's like it to be raised by that. It was like, yes. Yeah, so and you get that. You, you have to feel get that. Even if you didn't do it. But until you get to the academy. <laughs> Is anyone here trained in martial arts? Well, like, what do you train? Judo? Did you ever like compete with someone? Like get face to face thrown down? I have. I'm not a martial artist. You, what belt did you get up to? Was it green? Okay. So. You have competed with someone, you have grappled with them, you have thrown them to the ground. Have you ever had someone say, hey man, next time you go out there, I've never done this, but what you really should do is this. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know what, word? S -s Square up with me real quick. Show me if that works. Right? Like, <laughs> It's so, and that's why we see it all, by, by the way, we're culturally ingrained in this. We, we see people who constantly criticize who've never done. Like, if you look at sports, we have all these commentators who never played the game say, here's how he should do this. How could he, because when you're at a game and it's moving a million miles an hour and you're upstairs looking at everything from a bird's eye view, you can tell that guy's open. I'm in the game. It's a totally different vibe. It's a totally different vibe. That's a totally different vibe. Yes. Yeah. Like, you know.
uh, an aspect of this, this, this term likability. So I also have a podcast called The Art of Likability. It's listened to over 170 countries. I've been talking about this for the last four years. I've been researching it. Really interested in this topic of liking ourselves, liking others, and having others like us. Right? I think it's a very important kind of dynamic. Right? So how do you do that? There is a um, philosophy that I adhere to that says this. The characteristic traits that I will assign to you, like how I see you, is solely based on how I feel when I'm around you. So let me say that again. The characteristic traits that I'm going to assign to you is how I feel when I am around you. Allow me to clarify. Have you ever been around someone who's tried to make you feel dumb? Yeah. Like talk down to you. Don't you think they're dumb? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> because when I'm around you, I feel like you're trying to make me feel dumb. So because this is how I feel when I am around you, I think you're dumb. Wow. Right? Think about it. Think about someone who you love. How do you feel when you're around them? If you love them, yeah. Right, so when you're around them, they make you feel a certain way. So because you feel that when, you, when you're around them, you assign that attribute to them. Yeah. Okay, so that's how it works. Most people don't get it. Okay. Right, so I'm going to show you how to recreate this wherever you go. Okay? This is really powerful because most people, I think, can be, you ever heard of in the zone? You ever heard this phrase? Yeah. Like I'm in the zone. Yeah. I was just in the zone. I don't know what's happening, right? This is how you can be in the zone with your confidence around people like that. Okay? I want you to decide how is it that you would like everyone to feel when they're around you. Right? Whether it is a cashier at a supermarket, whether it is a presenter, whether it is a professor, whether it is a colleague, ask yourself, if I had to choose one dominant feeling that when someone gets into my gravitational pull, okay, I'm gonna go really deep on you, it's gonna be a little deep, but it's a fair minute, it was there. Yeah. Did you know that everything gives off a gravitational pull? Yes, yeah. yes. Like everything. So like the only reason why the Earth isn't floating away is because the sun is so massive, it has a gravitational pull. But literally, you, because you have mass, and you, because you have mass, you have a gravitational pull as well. That's when we talk about someone's magnetic, right? So it's like, a, it's like a physical science to it, right? But then there's also kind of a, a quantum physics of it. This, I'm going to go really like, nerdy on you right now. Wait, no. So there's something called the efferic, right? Um, you can look this up. It's like a quantum physics term. So efferic is the sense of there's an energy. And they've measured this, right? Like if you put an EKG, you can measure outputs of energy in energy waves. So some waves go like this, right? Whatever, right? So, you ever been around someone you say, I just vibe with them? You ever yes. like, yeah. And if some people are around you, it's like, I just don't vibe with them. Right. Like, literally, you're, you're, the energy they're putting out, the energy you're putting out, it's a real thing. It's a measure. Like, everyone has a field of gravitational pull, and heart waves, and brain waves, and alpha waves, and delta waves of the brain, without getting too geeky, because I'm really into this right now. <laughs> I, I, am, I am admitting a frequency. Yep. And if you don't believe me, go to any medical field and let them put the EKGs on you. You're admitting a frequency. If you can get more clear on the kinds of frequencies you would like to admit around people, you now, instead of by accident having people have an experience around you, you consciously create that experience that they have around you. Said a different way. I want people to feel awesome when they're around me. That's how I feel. So I want them to think I'm awesome. So if I want them to think I'm awesome, what's the quickest, fastest, direct path to that? I make them feel awesome. If I make you feel awesome, so when you are around my essence and my aura and my presence, you feel awesome about yourself, by definition, you should say, arouse an awesome guy. I don't know if it's true. I'm sure there's tons of people who don't like it. I'm saying I'm just intentional about what I'm trying to create. So I don't go like, you ever have this happen? You open the door. And I can't be the only one. And then you wait for someone to come by, and they just don't even acknowledge you, and yes. you walk by. Yes. And you're like, am I your effing doorman all of a sudden? Right, so like you go from like trying to hold the door and be nice, to like, you know, like, you know. Right, 
So if anyone does something like even if it's their job, look at that and I say that. Right? That's it's a very small thing that I choose to do that anybody can do. Anybody can do, right? Watch this, okay? Okay, thanks for being at my bed, thanks for being at my bed, thanks for being at my bed, thanks for being at my bed. Versus thanks for being at my bed. Thank you for being at my bed. Thank you for being at my bed. Thank you for being here. It took maybe 0.4 seconds longer to do the second was the first, but the first one is like. Well, yeah. It's more personal versus right. um, as what's old. Yeah. It's more personal. So this morning I was speaking in New Jersey, right? So I spoke in New Jersey at Midnight High School, and they gave a copy of my book to every one of the students there, and I'm autographing it for all of the kids that did, right? So I'm writing it, and I and this is just the thing I choose to do. It's an Arrow thing. I say when I sign up, what's your name? Margie. Margie. Okay, hi, Marjorie. I'm going to say their name two to three times when I first meet them because I know your name is your favorite word. And I also know if I butcher your name, you don't like me. Fair? Some of y'all act like you don't care, but you do. You do. So I want, if I say their name and I make eye contact with them, for that one moment, they go, this person cares. And maybe, hopefully, that's the experience they have. But here's what I like you to do for the last five minutes. Okay? I want you to ask yourself, if you could create one feeling or one emotion in other people, what would you want it to be? If you find a difficulty thinking about it, here's the way you come up with it. Imagine there's two people in your life. Uh, give me two people in your life that you love. Okay, what was your name? So your mom and who's the other person? Your best friend. So your mom and your best friend are talking. You walk into a room and you find out that the topic of discussion is Tony. And they're talking about you behind your back. And you sneak in and you go, oh, they're talking about me. What they say? And you listen in. And they say, you know what's so amazing about Tony? You know why I love Tony so much? It's because Tony is so. That's your work. That's your work. So now when you interact with you have to ask yourself, how do 